Love can be tricky. Some feel it deeply and wholeheartedly, while some fear it. It is normal to need to love on your terms until you feel safe. What is sometimes hard to deal with is the fact that you have to compromise. This story is about Emma, whose plan gets thrown off course when her husband returns to Italy to take care of his father. Will she be able to cope with a long-distance relationship, or will she let go of her husband? We will find out. In the opening scene of the wedding veil inspiration, we are shown three best friends, Emma, Tracy, and Avery, and how each one got married to the love of their lives. What better bond could there be between best friends? Thereafter we see Emma, one of the three friends, who is a professor of art history and married to Paolo, a businessman who is about to open his lace shop, getting ready for work. On her mirror are the pictures she snapped with her friends, one with her husband, and her five-year plan. All these are very important aspects of her past, present, and future. Paolo joins her, gushing about how beautiful she looks. They kiss, and her nose catches the whiff of a delicious aroma. Alas, it is Cornetto's. Her darling husband woke up early enough to make it for their breakfast. However, she suspects that he woke up early because he is nervous about the opening of his lace shop later that day. Paolo assures her that he is confident because his product line is good, his store manager who is also his cousin Matteo, is learning the business, and his wife will be there to help him. The companionship that comes with marriage. Emma seems to lack this confidence, and she wishes she has her husband's confidence. But despite her doubts about herself, Paolo believes she is capable of replacing her boss Nancy, who is their department's chair in her place of work. However, her husband does not like how tedious Nancy makes her work, and it affects them, especially in terms of childbearing. She has been promised a promotion, which she is yet to get, and is delaying their plans to start having babies. The doorbell rings, and Paolo gets it. It is a package from Nana, Paolo's grandmother. She sends Emma a lace dress she made for her to wear to the opening of her husband's shop. She also sent them words of encouragement. Before the opening, Paolo tries to make sure everything is in place. Emma resumes work after a long time. She finishes a class, but cannot find the passion in the students, because it's rowdy and boring. However, Lily, who is her ta, believes in her ability to change the students' perspectives when she goes into the real artwork. As kind as she is, Lily agrees to help her with the grading. When Emma shows her the dress Nana got for her, Lily admits that it will look good on her. Being good friends, Emma invites Lily to Paolo's shop opening. Even if she doesn't want to be there, the thought of the food makes her accept the invitation. In the next scene, Emma gets ready to leave work to help her husband before the opening. Nancy, her boss, approaches her to discuss her article in her office. Not wanting to be late for the opening, Emma tries to make an excuse, but she insists that the meeting will be just for two minutes. Emma and Lily emphasize the two minutes. Unfortunately, she ends up spending more than two minutes with Nancy. Afterward, she rushes down to the opening, apologizing to her husband for coming late. To make matters worse, she forgot to change into the dress Nana -na sent. Although this is another way her work is interfering in their personal life, Paolo doesn't take offense. He shows her a veil on display which happens to belong to the house of Stefana, Paolo's family business famous work. Emma is surprised only to discover that it was brought by her friends Avery and Tracy. They believe the veil should be at the opening, being the family's design. Emma introduces Matteo to them. Lily also joins them with her camera to take pictures. While at it, she sees the veil and tries not to take its picture, because of its history that she knows. What could be the history? Stay with me and you will find out soon. Emma introduces her to her friends, and while they are talking about Lily almost taking pictures of the veil, something happens. The veil almost falls off because of Matteo, but he and Lily hold it together while trying to save it from falling. Lily avoids touching it for too long, which makes Matteo curious about it. He expresses his interest in the veil's history. Avery and Tracy decide to let Emma tell Matteo and everyone at the opening about the fascinating story behind the veil, as Lily films her. The veil was made in 1800 by the house of Stefina in Burano. It was made for a bride named Ariana, who is going to be Contessa Di Marco. However, the veil made its way to San Francisco. That's where Emma, Tracy, and Avery bought it, because they loved its lace. The storekeeper told them that there is a legend attached to the veil, which is that anyone who owns or touches the veil will find true love. But they do not believe it. However, Avery believed it. The evidence of her belief is that she was the first to own the veil. By chance or by the magical power of the veil, she met Peter the next day, who is now her husband and the father of her children. Tracy also had it in her possession, and she took it to a tailor to have a little snag repaired. Guess what? That is where she met her husband. Finally, when Emma took it to Italy to research its origin, that is where she met Paolo. Seems the legend about the veil is true after all. Paolo confirms that the veil is the reason they opened the house of Stefana in Chicago. His wife wants to be in Chicago, and he wants to be wherever she is. They seal the too-good-to-be-true story with a kiss. The people are thrilled. After the opening of the lace shop, Avery, Tracy, and Emma chat while they eat deep-dish pizza at Emma's house. It was a tradition for them when they were spinsters. 
They missed being together before they got married. Tracy and Avery love the dress Nana made for her. Seeing that she did not get to wear it because of Nancy makes them unhappy. They believe she has to find a way to deal with her, but Emma wants to tolerate her till she retires. When Paolo gets home, he thanks his wife for the veil story, because it made the opening more interesting. Paolo offers them food, but they refuse, because eating deep dish pizza is a tradition for them as friends. While at it, Paolo leaves to answer the phone. It happens to be his sister. She's calling to inform him their father is sick, and he has been rushed to the hospital. This is a shock to him, especially since he loves his family. Paolo needs to go to Italy that night, so Emma helps him pack his bag and book his flight. She volunteers to follow him, but he insists she stays and manages Matteo while he is away. Emma and Paolo kiss, and she hopes he comes back soon. The next morning, Emma is bothered because she has not heard from Paolo. Her friends encourage her, tell her to be positive, and assure her everything is fine. Meanwhile, Emma is working on writing a new article about the veil, which her boss asked her to do. This is yet another task she is given before she hands over the reins to her. It happens to be what she has been doing, giving tasks upon tasks. Avery suggests they keep the veil with Emma for a while. She plans to keep it with the christening gown in the lace shop, but she will have to inform Matteo. They want to know why Matteo relocated from Miami. It happens to be because his last relationship did not work. So he reconnected with Paolo when he went there for business, and decided to relocate to Chicago to help him out in the lace shop. Also, a means of starting fresh. Avery sees Emma's five-year plan, and she is surprised she still keeps it and revises it every five years. They reminisce on the good old days, take a selfie, and wish they never had to depart. Paolo calls Emma the next day to let her know he arrived there safely. His father is receiving treatment and will be fine, although he wishes that she could be there with him. Her friends have left, and she plans to visit Matteo later in the afternoon. Emma attends an online meeting on behalf of Nancy. When Lily comes in to see her, she appreciates her for attending the opening. Lily, being innovative, decides to make a video of a spider in Emma's office. Unknown to Lily, Emma is scared of tiny insects. She implores Lily to get rid of it, but unfortunately, it is nowhere to be found. Scared, she decides to visit Matteo, and Lily goes with her. On entering, she sees people gathered around the veil. Matteo informs them people have been visiting the shop to see the veil, but he did not allow them to touch it. This makes Emma suggest they move it to somewhere more secure. Although Matteo thinks there's no need, because the customers have been respectful of the veil. Emma wonders how the people find out about the veil, and Matteo tells them one of the customers mentioned seeing a video of it online. Just then, one of the customers calls Emma everyone's favorite art historian, and Lily admits she is the one behind the video. Emma watches the video, while Lily apologizes, begging her not to be angry. Emma's not angry, but wants her to take down the video, but it won't matter, because she has 100,000 views and a lot of people have shared it. That means if she deletes it, the video will still be everywhere on the internet. Matteo agrees with Lily and asks Emma to reconsider, because the video has brought them customers. Emma finally decides to leave the video, because it has helped Paolo's shop but being humble, refuses to be anyone's favorite art historian. She makes some suggestions that will make walk-in customers able to afford some items. Because what they currently display are very expensive wedding items to attract large vendors only. He agrees with her new ideas, and she leaves for her house. Matteo asks for Lily's help with the new display, and she agrees to help him. Although Emma did not properly introduce them, they tend to get along. While Emma makes dinner, Paolo calls to check up on her. His father is responding to treatment, and he is getting better. They're both relieved because they will get to see each other soon. Paolo plans to stay for a few days in Italy to help his uncle with the family business. Missing her husband so much, she catches him up on the spider in her office and also about the video. Seems their encounter has her developing some sort of feelings, because Lily googles Matteo and finds his picture with his ex-girlfriend. This makes her think he is in a relationship, and she feels disappointed because she likes him. The veil seems to be working faster than expected. Don't you think? We will find out. Meanwhile, while unsuccessfully trying to make coffee, Emma decides to get one at work. She bumps into Nancy while she gets her coffee. As always, Nancy informs her that she will be attending a staff meeting with her before she retires. Emma declines, because it will clash with her class with the students. However, Nancy insists, and plans to assign the class to another person, Professor Jason. Emma agrees reluctantly, and sees it as a way of preparing herself to be the departmental chair. Emma's idea works, and the walk-in customers keep buying the affordable items. At the same time, Lily helps Matteo with the restocking. Emma stops by the shop after work and finds out her new idea worked, and she is delighted. However, when Lily is helping with the restocking, she keeps avoiding the veil. Noticing this, Emma tells her it will not work if she does not touch it. Unknown to her, she touched it with Matteo during the opening night. One of the walk-in customers asks about the story behind the christening gown. She learns that it belongs to her husband, along with several generations of De Stefana babies, and it is also linked to the veil. This is because the owner of the veil keeps it in her belongings, even though she never had a child. When Emma gets home, she sees that Paolo is back. 
They hug and kiss each other happily. She was not expecting him so soon, because he hadn't informed her. It happens that his uncle has everything under control, but only for a few days. He will have to go back to Italy soon. Paolo's father is getting better, but he is taking his health challenge personally. While in Italy, he visits the glass store and finds out that Emma's favorite mirror is still available. The shop owner is keeping it for her, because he knows she loves it. Although they can't afford it now, she has to wait till it's possible. In the next scene, Emma and Lily take a walk through the park at the university. She is glad Paolo is back, so he can help Matteo out with the shop. Emma wants to know if Lily likes Matteo, but she tells her they're just friends, especially since she thinks he has a girlfriend. Emma clears her assumption by revealing that he does not have a girlfriend, and he is a good man. Emma hopes things work out between them, and feels it will, because she has seen them together behind the veil. Lily disagrees, and fails to admit how she feels about Matteo. Lily changes the topic to her article about the veil. Seeing the article makes her feel Emma is not good at writing, but at discussing art and history. To justify her point, Lily asks her to watch the videos, and also read people's comments. Not being the video type, Emma disagrees initially, but when Lily insists, she decides to give it a try. After the meeting with the staff, Nancy asks about the article, and Emma promises to send it to her when she is through with the editing. Nancy tells her she found out about the video from some of the students and watched it. Unfortunately, she wants her to stop making the videos, because it is not what they stand for in the department. Seems Nancy is being rigid, with the traditional way of doing things. Emma feels discouraged, but hopes all the troubles will soon be over when she retires. While on a dinner date with her husband Paolo that night, Emma informs him about the discussion she had with Nancy. Displeased, he feels it is high time she resigns and tries other things, because he feels Nancy will never retire. She disagrees with him, because she has invested too much into being the next departmental chair for her to quit now. Seeing this as the perfect opportunity, he decides to let her know that he has to relocate back to Italy to run the family business, with his sister assisting him. He tries to convince her to move to Italy with him, because he does not want to leave without her. Coupled with the fact that she has taught there before, and they will be glad to have her back. Emma wishes there could be another way, another person to take over the family's business, but there's no other person. Not being able to convince her, Paolo leaves for Italy the next day, and he will be gone for three weeks. He plans to discuss with his family if there is a way he can visit her often. Emma believes the distance will affect their relationship, because of her past long-distance relationships, but Paolo encourages her that they will figure it out together. Worried, Emma discusses her situation with friends over the phone. They want to know if moving is in their plan. It happens that Paolo wants them to raise their children in Italy, but they don't have children yet. They encourage her to make the best decision. They have seen her videos online, and believe she is good with them. Avery tries to convince her to reconsider being the departmental chair. However, Nancy's calls come in at that moment. She promises to call them later that night. Meanwhile, Lily seems to be getting along with Matteo. She stops by the shop to see if she forgot her sunglasses, but realizes that Matteo has his hands full. The shop is filled with many customers, and she jumps into assisting him. Dropping by to pick up her sunglasses eventually turns out to run till the shop closes. She tries to avoid connecting, and he notices, making him ask if she truly believes the story. She gives the perfect explanation of why she believes it, and while expressing herself, they both touch the veil. He later asks her out on a date, and she agrees. It almost seems that she has been expecting him to ask. When she leaves, he stares at the veil, as if believing that the history behind the veil is true. Emma decides to call her friends three days after their last call. When they ask how she is adjusting to the distance between her and Paolo, she tells them she is fine, and does not want to go into detail. Her doorbell rings, and she promises to call them back again. She opens the door and sees a pizza delivery guy, but she did not order it. When she opens the box, she discovers that it is from Paolo. The romantic gesture amazes her and makes her feel loved. The next day, she is scared to enter her office because of the spider from the other day. Lily believes the spider will be long gone, and encourages her not to be scared. Upon entering, Emma lets Lily know that she has watched the videos and read people's comments. She admits that she did well, making Lily happy that she is seeing what she is capable of. She suddenly sees the spider, and tries to get rid of it before Emma notices and gets scared. Emma finally informs her that she will not be able to continue with the videos, because Nancy has ordered her to stop. This is displeasing to Lily, who knows she has a lot of potential and wants her to reconsider. However, for the sake of her future ambitions, Emma has made up her mind. In a bid to convince her, Lily lets her know that she inspires her, which is why she agreed to be her ta. Matteo and Lily later go to the restaurant and have a good time there. He wishes they could go out more, but Lily avoids conversation. He notices it and feels that maybe she is engaged with someone else. Meanwhile, Emma misses her husband. She places her husband's shirt with the Italian inscription on the pillow beside her. She holds it as she sleeps. The next day, she decides to give making coffee another try, but she just can't do it. She leaves it and plans to get it at work like last time. She bumps into Nancy and asks to see her. 
Yet again, Nancy has some suggestions. She wants her to change the way she dresses, because the flashy colors will not be good if she becomes the department chair. The ever-obedient Emma decides to change the way she dresses. Matteo discusses how the shop is faring with Paolo over the phone, and he asks for his help. On what? We will find out as we go on. In the next scene, Matteo and Lily work to help Paolo surprise Emma. He already told them where to get the key and the door password. So they decorate the house before she gets back to work. As Emma walks home, she almost catches them, but they hide before she can see them. After she enters, they leave. Matteo notices how Lily tries to get rid of him when he mentions going to a restaurant. Meanwhile, Emma is surprised to see all the decorations, and she thinks Paolo is back, but he is not. However, he has plans on how to make their love life thrive. He has planned a virtual dinner date via a video call for them. Paolo is always making an effort to make them work, even with the distance, and Emma appreciates him for this. The next day, Emma visits the shop to see Matteo. She found out from her husband that he helped him with the dinner date, and appreciates him. He's delighted and decides to ask about Lily. He likes her, but he feels though she is hiding something, or maybe she is not into men, because she mentions Charlotte to him. That is quite funny, and she tells him Charlotte is her code name for a spider. She lets him know that she will be delighted if they end up together. She suggests that he tell her how she feels, and she gives him the direction to where she loves to go every morning, which is Groove Rock Park. Paolo calls Emma while she goes through the pictures Lily snapped during the opening of the lace shop. She thinks of an idea and decides to share it with him, to make a replica of Ariana's veil, and sell it, because she feels people will buy it. He buys into the idea and plans to discuss it with his sister, who is in charge of marketing. Due to her discussion with Nancy, Emma decides to change her way of dressing, but Lily feels it does not look good on her. Emma refuses to accept her opinion, because she feels she is dressed like the upcoming departmental chair that she aspires to be. But she is giving the video idea a second thought, if Lily is willing to help. Lily is delighted to be of help without thinking twice. But she lets her know that she has to change her way of dressing, and not care about what Nancy suggests. In the next scene, Paolo calls his wife to let her know that his sister Sophia likes the idea, and they decide to give it a try. She is happy that her plan will come to fruition. She plans to have a virtual dinner with Tracy and Avery. She believes she owes them an explanation for not getting back to them as promised. However, Paolo admits he won't be coming back anytime soon which makes her believe he is choosing his family over her. Displeased, she hangs up on him. She leaves for her house heartbroken and meets Avery and Tracy on the way. She is surprised to see them, but they decided to visit because they believe she is avoiding them. She is happy to see them, especially in her predicament, and she hugs them. Their presence comforts her. They notice the change in the way she dresses. She explains the long distance issue she is having with her husband. Tracy advises her to think about moving to Italy, but she feels she needs to stay because she has worked so hard. This makes her realize she is doing the same thing she blames Paolo for. Avery asks if she changed anything in her five-year plan, but she did not. So, she makes her realize where the problem lies, which is simply that she and Paolo don't have a shared goal. They encourage her to reconsider her plan, and make plans that include both of them. Finally, she admits that Nancy has made her life miserable, and the videos Lily posted were good. But the problem is that she is scared of telling Nancy. The next day, as her friends prepare to leave, they admire the lace Nana made for her. They discover that there is an embroidery of E for Emma in the dress. Matteo meets Lily at the park that Emma described for him. He opens up to her about how his last relationship did not work out, and his ex-girlfriend got engaged after they broke up. That made him decide never to get serious again. This lasted until he met Lily, but he does not seem to understand why she is running away. Lily lets him know that it is a protection thing for her, as a result of her past relationships. He encourages her to give love another chance in the present, and worry about tomorrow later. They agree to just one date for starters, which is that particular day, and see how it goes. Paolo calls Emma to inform him of her friend's suggestions. She plans not to consider it, because she does not know how to face Nancy. This makes him let her know the only solution to their long-distance relationship is for him to spend one week with her in Chicago, and three weeks in Italy. She disagrees with him, because she believes a distance relationship will not work out for her, and they do not come to a conclusion. At work, Nancy discusses the final budget for the next semester with Emma. It happens that they have to let go of one of the staff, even if she retires. Nancy suggests one of the least experienced professors. Unknown to her, Emma is troubled in her marriage because of the job. Now she wants her first duty as the chair to be firing people. Emma sees this as an opportunity to make things right in her family. She makes her decision to resign known to Nancy. While she is trying to explain how the job affects her, Nancy is not angry one bit. Apparently, the whole thing with Nancy has been deliberate. Nancy knows she has many talents, but putting up with bureaucracy is not one of them. All she has been doing is to make her realize it and pursue her real passion. She is delighted to hear that from Nancy. At home, she decides to travel to Italy to meet Paolo, and she packs her bag. Meanwhile, Paolo has flown back to Chicago to see her because of their last conversation. He thinks she wants to leave him, but she lets him know that she is on her way to see him. 
They kiss each other lovingly. While having dinner, Paolo tries finding his way around the long-distance relationship just for her. But Emma believes he always wants to live in Italy with his family. She understands his wishes and doesn't want him to compromise because of her. She burns her five-year plan, but gives him the part where he is included before she burns it. She reveals that she quit her job and has decided to not allow anyone to make decisions for them. Not that she will not be working, but it will be different now. Lily has agreed to help her with the video, and she plans to expand the video of the veil into a series. She will be talking about art and history. Paolo admits she is good with it, because he has seen the video. He even calls her everyone's favorite art historian, just like others. She also tells him Matteo is in love with Lily, because they left the veil in the shop. So their love is meant to happen. They drink to a new beginning. Finally, things are starting to fall into place for them. But, it's not just them alone. In the next scene, Lily and Matteo get married. Emma, Paolo, Avery, Tracy, and their families and loved ones celebrate with them. Emma, Avery, and Tracy attest to the power of the veil. Meanwhile, Emma's idea worked for Paolo's family business, and the replica of the veil has become a bestseller. Finally, Paolo can get Emma the Venetian mirror that she loves for her birthday. They decide that the veil should go to New York, to Nick's sister. However, for the christening gown, Emma insists that it should stay in Italy. She then reveals that it's because she is pregnant. Such pleasant news. At last, their family will grow bigger. The friends toast to friendship, the veil, and all the amazing women who have worn it. In the next scene, Emma begins making her video. But not only her, but even her husband also joins her. She explains how they met, and she naturally fell in love with him. Paolo confirms that it all happened in Italy, and they kiss. Eventually, they are fortunate enough to surmount all the obstacles in their marriage and find common ground. While the wedding veil also brings about another happy home. Cheers indeed to the amazing power of the wedding veil.